I don't need to size the rectangle exactly perfectly at this point, but I just want to have it centered so that it's uh, centered on the X axis here. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out a rectangle such that it's going to be centered on the X axis. So there we go, that's good enough. So as I release that, now you can see that my model disappeared and this is a bug in the program. So don't be alarmed when this happens. This just means that uh, the screen has to be refreshed. And if you turn off snaps and or just uh, navigate in the view with the middle mouse button, then your rectangle will come back. Okay, so it's basically it's centered on the x-axis. Take a look at this though. My length and width are way too high. It's 84 inches by 144 inches. So let the, let's get this down to something reasonable. Now, this is another area that might get confusing because right now I'm still in the create panel and my object is selected and I can actually change these values currently by clicking and dragging on these spinners. But if you click off of the rectangle in any way or choose any other tool, like if I, for example, example press the right mouse button, that's going to go away. So I need to go now to the modify panel and I'll set this to something reasonable. So my length, which is basically the depth here, I'm going to set that to let's say 12 inches and my width I'll set to let's say 16 inches. Press the tab key and then I can zoom in by just pressing the Z key on the keyboard. I've got to have focus on the main window. Press the Z key and now I've zoomed in and I can adjust the position and I can zoom in and out, but I, I just don't want to have a non-zero X value. So if I'm off in X, then I can just choose the move tool and type in a zero down here in the transform type in area to send the object to a value of zero in X. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so then next I'm going to create my arc. To make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to delete the top segment of my rectangle first. All right, so I'll right click on the selected rectangle and choose convert to from the quad menu. And I'm looking for convert to editable spline. Not any of these other ones. Make sure that you're choosing convert to editable spline. Now watch what happens in the modify panel over here when I select convert to editable spline. Now it's no longer a rectangle primitive. I don't have parameters like length and width. Instead, I've now got a different object type called editable spline, and this gives me access to each one of the points on the model. So now I can go in to select these different so-called sub-object modes. I've got vertex, and that's points. I've got segments, and then I've got spline, which in this case is going to be the entire curve. You'll also note that if I press the plus sign here in the Modify panel, we'll have access to those sub-object modes up here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go into Segment Sub-Object Mode and just select this top segment here, which is at the back of my chair. I'm going to press the Delete key on the keyboard to just get rid of it. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is to create an arc, a perfect semicircular arc connected to these points. So to make that a little bit easier, I'm going to snap to vertex. So once again, I'm going to go back into my snaps. I'm going to right click on that. And this time I'm going to choose to snap to vertex instead of grid points. Good. And then I'll enable snaps. So now as you move your cursor around, you should see a little blue cross appear when you get close to a point or a vertex. So that means snapping is working. Good. Now I'm going to go back to the create panel and I'm going to create my arc. Here we go, it's under Shapes Arc. And I'll just click and drag and then release the mouse button and then drag once again to set the radius. And when I have the radius the way I want it, then I can just click once again with the left mouse to create the arc. When I'm done making the arc, I can right click to exit the tool. Cool, now I've got the arc and once again, we, we are getting that display corruption a little bit. I'm going to turn off snaps just so that we're not distracted by that flashing. Currently, now we have two curves in our view, and I could select them separately. 
There are two separate spline curves. Well, I need to combine them into one because that's the only way I'll be able to apply the next effect, which is an extrude. Currently, this is just a, a 2D planar spline, and we need to create a 3D surface here. We need to create some thickness. So to do that, we use the extrude modifier. But in order to extrude, we need to attach these two parts together. They have to be part of the same object for it to work correctly. OK, so I'll go back to my modify panel then. And you'll see one of them is still an arc, and it's got some parameters that you can play with. I'll control Z to undo that. So that's still a primitive. The other one we've converted to editable spline. So the editable spline gives us the ability to attach. So I'm going to scroll down in my modify panel until I see the attach button. Here it is in the geometry rollout. Geometry, attach. And then I'll just go ahead and click in any view to attach that. Good. And then I can right click when I'm finished attaching. I press Alt W to go back to the single viewport layout. So that's fine. I've got them attached, but unfortunately we're still not quite finished because we also need to weld the vertices. So if I go into vertex mode and I, for example, click on this corner here and move it, you'll see that, that it all moves together. Control Z to undo. But if I click here and move, you'll see it's actually not connected. Control Z to undo once again. So I've attached them, but they're currently two separate splines within one object. I need to make it one continuous closed spline curve. And in order to achieve that, I need to weld these points or vertices. So it's very simple. I just need to go into vertex sub-object mode and draw a selection rectangle to select all of those vertices at that joint. And scrolling down further in my geometry rollout, I'll find something that says weld. Next door to that, you'll see a numeric entry field. That's the threshold for welding. Vertices have to be closer together than this value in order to be welded. Okay, so if they're farther apart than 3 seconds of an inch in this case, then they will not be welded. I shouldn't have to change this. As long as it's not zero, I should be okay because these points are actually sitting right on top of each other. So I'm going to click Weld, and then I want to check it and make sure that it actually has accomplished what I wanted it to. So select this vertex here and move it and see, okay, is it really connected? Yes. Control Z to undo, and likewise check on the other side. Okay, so that's great. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo, and I'm going to exit out of sub-object mode. Remember that as long as you're in sub-object mode, you won't be able to select any other objects, and you also won't necessarily be able to apply modifiers. Um, you may actually end up only applying a modifier to a sub-object selection. So we want to exit out of sub-object mode before applying the extrude. Okay, I'm going to hit Alt-W once again and go out to my four viewport layout. And now I'm going to add the modifier. So in the modifier list, I'll click the pull down. And I'm looking for extrude. Here we go, extrude. Not face extrude. That's something different. Extrude is a modifier that's designed to add thickness to a line. So I'll go ahead and click on that. You'll see in the perspective or in any shaded view now, we've got something solid. Okay, but it has no thickness. It has a thickness of zero. So if I go back to my reference, how thick should it be? I'm going to say that's about two inches thick here. So I'll set a value of two. And now I've got an extruded solid. Cool.